You know, I've been thinking a lot lately about dwelling and where I'm dwelling. Um, it's a purposeful thought because nine times out of the ten, the day is crazy. I'm either at work for 12 hours running like crazy or I'm home chasing children, feeding, helping Matt, running like crazy. Uh, normally eat dinner about 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night on a work day, on a non-work day, just because that's the time we have to actually sit. Uh, I know it's not very good for my digestive health, but it is what it is. Um, and then typically uh, wake up, you know, between on a work day, it's 4, 4.30, non-work day, it's, well, Matt gets up at 5 or 6, I kind of sleep in. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is I'm surrounded constantly by a world that tells me I need to take care of me. I need to put myself first self-care, self-help. I need to acknowledge my stresses, my weaknesses. I need to, um, yes, devote time to my family, but if you're not taking care of yourself, then how are you going to take care of everyone else? And I have been very guilty of saying that, and I completely a thousand percent admit that. However, I feel like God is moving in this season of relinquishing that need that I have for me, relinquishing that need I have down to the core that if I don't get what I need, then I'm going to suffer. Everyone else around me is going to suffer. And then what good is all that? Or so-and-so has done me wrong. So I'm going to go to Target, spend a hundred dollars that I don't have get a Starbucks coffee that I don't need, but that will make me feel better. Totally have done that. Been there. Thousand percent. But the nagging, the constant nagging that he has on my heart lately about, yes, you are important, Molly. You matter more to me than you will ever know. And he's saying this to you too. And I have created all of this for my glory. Which means you too, Molly. I have created you for my glory. And you will not find in eternal happiness, eternal fulfillment in chasing what your soul is craving at the moment. I can't tell you how much chocolate I eat. Just ask Matt. It's unhealthy. So, as I enter into this season of slowing down, how do I even slow down into in a season where I'm raising a four-year-old, a one-year-old, a farm? My husband just quit his full-time job to work full-time farming. I full-time work three, three, uh, three shifts a week at the hospital. <laughs> Uh, how do I slow down? And it's the same as being committed in your relationships with other people. Your marriage goes sideways. Your marriage goes backwards. Your friendships disappear. They dissipate with a lack of time and a lack of interest, a lack of knowledge, a lack of, I see you. And even though I'm a little low myself, I feel like I need to pour all of my heart into you right now. And in a cool way that ends up filling the gaps in our own hearts. What I'm getting at is, for example, I worked Thursday, Friday this week, the weekend. So I was off three days in a row. I was really looking forward to it. I was, yay, I'm gonna get things done around the house. I've got the girls for three days by myself. Spoil, spoil, spoil. And on the third day, I found myself lacking. And on the third day, I found myself, I texted my mom and I was like, 
can I just drop them off for you for an hour? And I literally said in my text so I can get my life together. And I'm so thankful that she texted back and was like, well, I'm really not feeling very good, but you can. And then I was like, no, no, we'll just forget about it. For a brief moment, I was like, man, I just really needed someone to take care of my business. Like, I love my children, but I just needed... I needed me time. And then I looked at them and I was like, you are my me time. I prayed for you every day for years. I didn't think I could have you. How foolish I was into thinking that time not spent stewarding the relationships of my family just so I can have some me time was better. So I made up my mind. I said no to the thoughts and the feelings of self-help. And I put on the words of Christ, which says, I have made you for such a time as this. I know that was in the book of Esther, but I receive it as mine. <laughs> I have made you for a time such as this. I created those babies in your womb for a time such as this. You are a wonderful mom. You have every answer for every need that, you, that they need right now in the moment. I need you to take a breath. I need you to breathe. I need you to look at the big picture. I need you to take your eyes off of the small picture. The picture that is painted in your mind that you make out to be perfect. And let me show you my perfect. And it's a fulfilled life together. You are strengthened when you strengthen them. And you know what? I was blessed with an afternoon to be able to minister my, to my children. Their needs, their wants, their wishes. I was there. And I knew I wasn't alone because I had been running on my own reserves, my own willpower, my fight. And I was exhausted and it wasn't getting me anywhere. And I, God humbled me and he said, if you would just come and rest. And that's possible in the chaos, in the loudness, in the screaming, in the Cocomelon TV. It's possible. But you have to decide if you want it or not. He's like, I'm always here. Now, I've said this before. He says, seek first the kingdom of God, and then all these things will be added to you. I have to take that as truth. And when I do, it actually happens. So words of encouragement for today. Keep praying what you've been praying for. God never gives up. He has proven to be faithful always. He will never leave you abandoned. You are not alone. And reach out to those closest in your inner circle whom you can trust to pray with you, to support you. We were never meant to do this life alone, okay? So, and find encouragement in knowing that you don't have to succumb to your own thoughts, your own fears, your own desires, your wishes. The overwhelming loudness in your brain, you do not have to succumb to that. You can say no. It's a choice. I've, it's a whole nother story, but anyway. God says in his word, be strong in the Lord. And he says, I will go before you. You know, like he told the Israelites, I will go before you as a, a, a cloud by day and a, a fire a pillar, a pillar of fire by night. And that still applies to us today. He is here, living, active, always working. We must not forget that. 
He just needs us to call on him. I mean, just like calling up your dad. Dad, I am stuck. My tire is blown. I'm alone. I need help. And he says, I'll be right there. Same thing. And he brings a spare tire for you. I mean, God always provides and then he provides, provides because he knows our needs greater than ourselves. We just have to be humble enough to admit it. Working on the pride thing. These girls are happy.